Well, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yuri Volaring. Okay, the ruling APC held its neck meeting yesterday and um, it's like we're a bit further along on the road to, um, you know, coming up with candidates or, yeah, candidates for the parties. The aspirants, uh, one of them will convert into uh, a candidate of the party. But in the meantime, uh, well, the, the NEC has uh, made some, you know, given some indications. The NWC, the Working Committee, um, is to decide on the zoning and the mode of primaries. Let's talk about it for a bit. And we have um, Remy Amawaye, Ocean State Commissioner for Works and Infrastructure. And um, well, that, that is incidental because the man is an APC man. Is why he's here primarily. <laughs> good morning to you. Yeah, uh, good morning, Kuyari. Good morning, Amawaye. Yeah. Amawaye. Indeed, our pleasure. So um, your assessment of the neck from your corner, it went very well. Yes. Um, a lot, people made a lot, uh, a lot of, um, there were a lot of reactions to the fee for the uh, presidential tickets. And in fact, all, all the governors, uh, all, these, all, all the fees attached. Uh, I think women are looking good in the sense that female, I understand, uh, aspirants, uh, I think they have a free run. They, well, uh, uh, they women, can get their forms gratis. Or is that not exactly accurate? Well, that's not exactly accurate. Uh, okay. Good morning, viewers. At home. Good morning, Kuyori. Um, Thank you. We must not take away the fact that APC is a ruling party, and uh, there's so much attention. Um, before Match. the yesterday's meeting, there been a lot of insinuation. Um, at the moment, APC has about 15 presidential aspirants, so so there's a lot of attention will succeed President Mumodo Buhari. Um, and APC is a party that had always been conversing for women and youth and the disabled. So if you look at part of the outcome of NEC yesterday, um, the women are not to pay full fee. Um, they will pay, um, I think nomination is free, but they will pay for expression of form. So what that means is if a woman is running to become president, she's going to pay 30, 30 million naira. Um, there's also a special consideration for the youth. Um, you well, that's a, that, that's a hefty discount. If if if, yes, if a lady is to pay thirty million, million as against the for, hundred million, as against a hundred million. Well, that's that's also an indication that we the party wants to encourage more women mm. in politics. Mm -hmm. um, they, they've also um, there's also a good discount for the youth, um, age twenty five to forty. Mm -hmm. um, no, they, because the they are also were, going to pay about 50% of the fee. That, that, that was the case being made, and it has indeed been accepted? Yes, it's been accepted, um, okay. according to what the national youth leader, that is um, there's also They also made case for the disabled. Um, they are also going to pay about half of the fee. Um, I'm personally not, of, I, I don't really support making it entirely free for the disabled and the women, because a lot of people will just abuse it. At the end of the day, if it is free for women, only women can come out and tell you they want to be president because they just want their name to be heard. So at times when you make it too free, people would, uh, <laughs> would abuse the process. So, um, so that is the situation of things. But we must also have it at the back of our mind that uh, this is a ruling party. In, 19, in 2014, it was 20 million for presidential. In uh, 2019, I think it was 45 million. So now it's 100 million. Well, and that, as, it say, as you said, reflects um, perhaps the fact that there are more than a few uh, aspirants that want to get the ticket. Yes, because about 15 people have significant interest. And um, if you have too many aspirants, it will be so complex, uh, cumbersome. So I think what NEC also looked at is, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not part of, of NEC, course. but I think what they also looked at is, this would actually take away the men from the boys. Um, I've seen one of the uh, aspirants who had shown interest earlier complaining yesterday that 100 million is a huge amount of uh, money. And, uh, and my position is if you want to be president of over 200 million people, um, a country like Nigeria, it requires a lot of resources. And everywhere in the world, we must not deceive ourselves. Politics is expensive. Mm. We must not deceive ourselves. So, um, 100 million for someone who wants to run an election with over 50,000 polling units. It's, uh, such person will be able to afford it. And if you look at the trend of things since yesterday, um, an individual had signed a check of 100 million for Ashwa Jibola and Met Shinobu. Um, immediately. Immediately. Uh, we also read somewhere that uh, the DG of uh, Amechi Ndome has also gotten 200 million for the form. And so I'm sure the, those that are ready for the contest will be able to afford it. Uh, as you said, uh, by this definition, 
those who are ready for the contest uh, will be able to afford uh, this announcement, 100 million. Uh, yes. as, and when you compare it with other you know, uh, tickets for the same office in other parties, you know, we're talking about it, it's, it's not the same. It's not the same, no uh, doubt. But, uh, but what it means is that um, the extent to which an ordinary person can vie for the office of the president, uh, as far as even all of the parties, but in particular APC, you, you see, that, that, that business in the Constitution where anybody is entitled to vie. Yeah, but Uncle Yori, the question is, does anybody vie for presidency in U.S.? The, the, same, the, the same principle. It's right? the same principle. Um, Joe Biden had been in the Senate for only God knows. So it's it's not a defeated incumbent. So it's not it's not a job for the small boys. I mean, if you want to be president of Nigeria, it requires a lot of people. We are talking about talking of over two hundred million people. Um, we are talking about running for presidency in a country that has over seven hundred local government, over fifteen five hundred thousand polling units. So it's not it's not a job for the small boys. And if you also see the way this works, um, it might not even be the aspiring person that would ultimately pay for this. Look at the case of uh, Ashwa Yutinobu. It's a northerner from Kebi. I mean, that said, okay, I've signed a hundred billion naira check for you. Um, Indome is from Borono. Amich is from Portacot. So um, I think this is a time for us to know the serious aspirant from those that just want to be heard. I can also come out and say, okay, I want to be president <laughs> just because I want people to discuss me, so also list me among the 15, <laughs> 15 candidates. That's right. Okay, so then there's the matter of um, what, uh, how, how, how we shall go about conducting the primaries. Uh, that is to say, two things. One, zoning has to be pronounced upon, right? Uh, because we've been hearing things, uh, it is, you know, it is thought that it's going to the south. Yeah. Now, whether southwest, southeast, south, south, it's going to the south, and all sorts of everybody, you know, who feels that they are serious, has have, has been coming in on that particular um, situation. Yeah, there are those who are saying it is the turn of the south, south. Uh, of course, the southwest, you know, what, thinks what, it has a what turn. What is uh, an unwritten agreement that uh, when they not after the not, it will be the turn of the south. And if you look at all the leading. Aspirant, apart from maybe Yaya Bilo, they are all from the southern part of the country. And uh, APC is a party that is well structured. Um, Yoruba will say Egberto Leto. So, um, and yesterday, um, NEC had also given the power to NWC to take decision on their behalf for the next 90 days. Um, so, I'm sure at the appropriate time, um, National Working Committee would probably come up with what they want to say about the zoning. And on the mode of uh, primaries, it is clear in the constitution of the party uh, that it's either you come in through direct or indirect primary. That's clear in the constitution of the party. Mm. However, we've seen some of the aspirants that are not ready for primary conversing for consensus. In 2014, when we picked Mohamed Ubar as the flower of the party, it was not via consensus. We carried out primaries. Um, so I am. I know those conversing for consensus are, are, are candidates, are aspirants that are not ready. I mean, take Ashwa Jibola Ahmed Tinubu, he's gone around the country. Um, he's, you know he's ready for primaries. And um, so NEC, through the work in the NWC, I'm sure would come up with a, the appropriate uh, mode of primaries. Mm -hmm. Because the um, NWC will be advised, well, it, it, I, have, I have read in the news that Whatever they come up with NWC uh, in in the NWC will be forwarded to NEC um, for ratification. Yes, but as you the know, highest may. Yeah, but the you know, they've also given the powers to NWC to take on behalf of NEC because mm -hmm. calling NEC is always not easy, particularly with the INEC timetable now. Mm -hmm. So, but one thing that is sure is um, the concern of the party is clear. That is that is direct or indirect primary. Yes, there are people who feel. Um, Doing direct primaries might be cumbersome, so they have the opinion that it should be indirect. And there are some people that are saying, "Okay, let's do consensus." But I know from what the president has always been saying, um, with the consensus, you might not get the best um, candidate. So it's always good you get the members of the party to determine who becomes their um, candidate. And uh, 
if you look at what's on ground, it's clear that a candidate or an aspirant stands out on this whole issue. And I, <laughs> I know other aspirants that are not really ready for uh, primaries are the one canvassing for um, consensus. But as it is now, Ashwa Ajibola Ahmed Tinubu is clearly ready for primary. And he seems to be the only aspirant that is fully on ground and that is ready for uh, primary, be it direct or indirect primaries. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and as you were saying, it's, you know, it's a lot easier to, to manage uh, indirect primaries. It's a lot easier because know. just the statutory, uh, just the delegate uh, that will come and vote. Um, if you look at it, um, analysis of, we have about 7,000 plus delegates um, that would vote if it's um, indirect primaries. But if it is direct primaries, you are expecting every member of the party uh, to come and vote. And that might be too cumbersome for um, the presidential uh, primaries. Well, uh, indeed. So, well, the other thing I think is uh, the things that have been decided already, you know, the presidential primary has been fixed for 30 years. Yes, I mean, based on the new guideline of INEC. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can also see that other parties are also uh, preparing. Uh, PDP has also fixed their own uh, for that uh, that time. So um, interesting days lies ahead. Uh, but as I've said earlier, I'm sure the National Working Committee will come up with a mode of primaries. And if they are to go by what we have in the concern of the party, it's going to be direct or indirect. But as we explain that for the presidential primary, direct might be cumbersome. So we might end up, depending on the wisdom of the National Working Committee, to come up with indirect primaries. But I can say for free that um, those canvassing for consensus, ah, those are not ready for primaries. And if you look at the antecedent of our party, you would always do primaries. And the president has said that um, we should encourage feeding someone that is very popular. And for you to feed someone that is very popular, the opinion of the delegate, the opinion of the party members count. I've also seen people raise the issue of uh, when you want to do indirect primary, money will exchange. And I told them in 2014, uh, President Mamadou Bari won our primary, but it was not the richest. We had the um, um, Atiku contested in 2014 against him, uh, Kwankwaso contested against him. Yet, in spite of the money back that contested against Bari in 2014, Bari won the primary ticket because every delegate of the party would also look at it that we must push out a candidate that can defeat the opposition. Indeed. So whether we like it or not, we have a major opposition in PDP. So we must ensure we get our best. I see PDP advising that we should pick a particular candidate. And I'm of the <laughs> opinion that if we pick that candidate by 12 o'clock on the election date, they will have defeated us. So we must put out a candidate that PDP is even afraid to, to contest with. And that's actually what I meant in the book. Okay. Um, uh, Dr. Olabisi Dejifulutile, journalist editor in chief, franktalknow.com, has joined us. Uh, a fine morning to you, Olabisi. Thank you for coming on as always. Thank you. Good morning. Indeed. Uh, well, we, we were speaking about some of those things. Um, the women, you know, seem to have got a fair deal because they have a hefty discount out of, uh, you know, for if, a, if, a, if a lady were to present herself now for, for the presidency. Uh, she wouldn't have to go all the way to 100 million. Mm. They would be <laughs> <laughs> they would pay just 50 million, right? No, no, 30. 30 it, million. It would, that 70% uh, discount. Is it 70? No, no. They are going to pay for expression of interest, and nomination form will be free. Okay. Mm -hmm. And expression of interest is uh, 30 million. 30 for million. And nomination is 70 million. Okay, that's great. That's great. At least. So if, uh, if you want to contest as a person. Uh, just that, uh, even if I want to. Yes. I don't think I have that uh, watch list, but <laughs> at least is um, they have they've been raising money for presidential aspirants. So the women <laughs> he made the point that he also immediately yesterday <laughs> somebody somebody picked up the tap for Ashwa Yes, Google, yes, you know, that that's and, right, that's you know, right. Uh, yeah, you know, and there are other aspirants indeed yeah. whose supporters are saying, "Look, we're ready. Here you are." But uh, at least the uh, APC shows that uh, well, we have preference for we, we have given chance. To women, women, the youth, the and the disabled. The yes, yes. Mm. But let's is there a yeah, of course. What's the, the, the money, the money is still <laughs> huge. <laughs> okay, uh, but well, if you if you say the money is still huge, there are other offices, you know, uh, that you can vie for. Uh, there's a two million naira office, for example, in terms of the cost of the form. Uh, to, to, it's just two million naira for house and of assembly. And if she wants to uh, vie um, for house of assembly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she's not going to pay two million because she will just pay for expression of interest which is uh, 500,000, so 
Oh, uh, okay. Which means you are trying to encourage just women yes. to just start from no, no, wherever no, no, we no, can no, 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 no. Look, and now move up as as time goes on. Don't, don't, don't forget you, the, Uncle, to also show you that the party cares about the women. Don't forget that if the women eventually get there, she gets the same salary as a male counterpart. But in buying form, yours is heavily discounted. Mm. That is because the party values women a lot. And as a traditional politician, mm. I know the women, as a, they, are, they are very important mm. in party politics. I like what you brought in. They get the same salary yes. Yes. as the men folk, yes. yet they didn't spend <laughs> the same, same amount. I'm not talking about the, their going, investment. Yes, <laughs> I was even going to add my own two bits. Uh, the salary for the president is irrelevant. The salary doesn't matter. No, it, it should matter. Well, it should matter. Because it's because only it's only here that it doesn't seem to matter. Oh, because the president is going to pay for his residence. Because really, he's going to pay for. Is this good? He, he, the, talking the, the, about the salaries. Talking about salaries. If you really want to look at it, he's not going to touch his salary. Uh, APC's nomination, uh, whatever, of hundred million. Is about the four years salary of the president <laughs> by the time he gets to power with about 30 million per annum in salary and emolument yes, now. Yes. So I think uh, no. the total should have been they probably won 20 million, but and the man will have invested 100 well, million. I, I, I but that, that's just a joke. These yeah. things are have the, as, because he had said that, unless it matters to you very much, he had said that, look, if a person is serious, this is also part of the way of. Weeding, whittling down interest to see who are those that are actually, that are actually uh, you know, very, very serious about the matter. I also know, I also know that uh, it's also a way of getting funds for the party. It's um, nomination forms and stuff like that. It's a way of raising money for the party usually. So, uh, of course, it's. You, we, I can agree that it's a way of whittling down. The field. The field. Yeah, because 15 people have shown interest that they want to be president. I thought they were 10. No, 15. And if okay. it's not that they brought this, more people have also shown interest. So with this now, you see serious contender. And it is also important that we know that the party can, at the end of the day, come out in their own wisdom that if you did not win, we are refunding your men. They might. Look at when we did the, that national convention. The national convention. And at the end of the day, we agree that, okay, if you are, you, you're stepping down, they will refund your money. You have said something that is very important. Party management is also very expensive. Yes. Very, very expensive. And it is not about the salary of the president of the person involved. I have told you that yesterday um, someone had signed a check of 100 million for Ashwaj Bola and made to Nobu, someone from the North. Yeah. Yesterday we also read that someone had signed a nomination for um, the, the 100 million for our Amechi. So it's, it's, it's not about the person's salary, it's about the, those supporting you, it's about the structure. There's no amount you because it comes down to the structure. It comes down to the structure. Amount that you you talk about will not be raised for actually but I met you but within house because he has the structures across the state. But there are some of these aspirants that they don't even know in some state. A leading aspirant came to Oshun a few days ago. We didn't even know. We just saw him on the on the dailies that he went to on his palace. So. I mean, that's, that's, um, it's about the people and the structure that you have. Okay. And uh, now, uh, the president is also, as, as he was in the case of the um, uh, chairmanship uh, prior primaries uh, convention, uh, he, he's been very, uh, sort of, the admonition to the people to not be divisive. Don't yeah. be divisive in any way. Uh, mm -hmm. This whole matter of party unity, it's like the president is guiding through that, uh, you know, rancor should be eschewed. Yeah, because uh, without it, with that, if that is not done, naturally we know that uh, in in unity we stand, uh, united <laughs> we stand, and, and uh, divided in, we fall. In, in, indeed. Yeah. yeah, so definitely, uh, and if you that admonition is also very important. If you look at what has been happening within the party, which even the chairman, uh, the chairman of your. Uh, Adam, yes, uh, sp spoke about yesterday the intrigues, and uh, he actually identified uh, some of the factors responsible for that, and the need for them to also close ranks and uh, ensure that they work within uh, with one voice, which is very important because it's it will be very easy.
even though APC is a ruling party, it will be very easy to get it out of power because we've seen a ruling party that got out of power just because there was division. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, so the, the other thing, of course, is uh, one of the dailies this morning, The Nation, in fact, um, you know, headlines, Buhari cautions APC against imposition of a candidate. Um, well, uh, how can imposition happen in this in op open kind of a... Uh, when, 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 you don't, when you don't feed the best candidate, I mean the best experience as your candidate. When you don't? When you don't feed the best, the most popular person as your candidate. When then the, that would mean the party was maybe, imposing. Yeah, maybe okay. a group okay, of so people just... Uh, this, this, this is really to the party. Yeah, that's... He's advising yeah. APC. Uh, good morning, Mazi uh, Koroapo in Arochuku. Good morning, sir. Good morning, my sister, my brother in the studio. Good morning. You see, the, although, to me, the money is very, very outrageous, considering the situation around our ground. But the question is, the 100 million is for the big boys, not for the newcomers. What we have big boys? If you are not prepared for election, you just got to see that. But my main concern is, now, listen, the ministers and the governors, where are they going to get the money, especially the minister? Is it not from is it their own salary or the allowances <laughs> or their, their savings? Yeah, but Mas, you just heard that um, supporters are picking up tabs for at least uh, a couple of the aspirants so far. Uh, but when you say people are picking for, uh, uh, forms for aspirants, if you look at the percentage, it will not get up to 20%. Okay. Maybe 30% or 30% as far as the forms are being picked by people. Mm. But the question is this. The chances for the use that is make concern. That is why when I, 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 I've been saying that if anybody wants to contest this election or even the present governors, I could have, have, have been saying it, I'm still, I'm still picking it. They could have waited when they leave office. Let them leave for those people that have already established, what I'm going establish, People know them with their track records to come on board. Because although in some other uh, countries, I saw where they are up to 30 something, uh, I just mentioned you know, up to 30 something presidential experience on this particular year. I was laughing. Now, to come back to Nigeria now, the number is not too much compared with what we have seen in past history. But my own concern is this if the money is at least for the ladies, the female folk. I would encourage them to participate. Whatever I can say, let them come on board. Let us see. All these data in the politics, people have been shouting. Whether the women themselves now can do a U-turn and say their own way in whether Senate or all this land. Because if the party has given the female folk the opportunity to come on board, they it's need for them to, to be carried along. They should go and stand up. Not after the election, uh, the female folk will come back and see that the complaint. Uh, they were not going to say So it is a challenge to all the female folks in any offices, in any one office, uh, they should come on board. Thank oh. you very much. I wish all the aspirants all the best. But we are here at least. At least, at least, at least people are here to do what? To push that is to make sure he comes on board. Okay, okay, then. Thank you very much, uh, Mazi Okora, for appreciate your calling in. Um, the other thing we could uh, talk about that I think is very important that came out of uh, the meeting yesterday is that the leadership of um, the party in the state, the ruling party in the state, was sort of defined unequivocally, uh, meaning that there will be less confusion. Um, so is it the, uh, who, because some, some people who have really worked and have invested the resources and time and effort, uh, you know, you know they, they are there wanting to be leader of the party by action and their deeds, uh, but the governor, the governors have been stated to be the leaders of the party. Now you couldn't be clearer than that. Well, um, it's, it's, that's straight. Um, the concern of the party gives the power of the leader of the party to the governor, and, and that's straightforward. However, um, there are some states where you have, in, in, in Lagos, in Kasina, for instance, um, some of the babas there will play advisory role. Um, so what they are saying here is, in Oshun, Governor Boyega Oyetola 
is the leader of the party. It is clear. However, Chief Adibisi Akande, a former governor and a former party, national party chairman, who can, can, can be in an advisory position to the governor, uh, being a former governor, being someone mm. that has gone through that path. But, mm. the, but the concern of the party is clearly stated that the governors are the leaders of the party. So I'm sure this will again reduce the friction you have in, in states where you have the governors and the former governors um, having friction. It is, it is clear. Mm -hmm. And I think all the structures of the party understand that. But however, um, there are situational exceptional cases whereby they would also defer to the advisory role of some set of leadership. Like in, in Oshun, we have what is called abortion. Yeah, the governor is the leader of the party, but the governor will not do anything without carrying Agboshun along. The house, Baba Kande, and a lot of them. Um, Lagos, I'm sure the governor of Lagos will not do anything without carrying along the governor's yes, advisory yes. council. So, okay. Let, let me quickly, let, let me take someone. Uh, Emeka is calling in from Benin Republic. Uh, good morning to you, Emeka. Good morning, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, please, I want to talk on the, the amount of uh, picking the form for mm -hmm. presidency. Okay. I think the amount is too exorbitant. Uh, I, in my own opinion, I think what they should be asking for is who is going to be there. If they want to measure maybe the person who will take the form based on the amount, I'm thinking of measuring the person based on intelligence or somebody who, uh, who, has, who has led a post and his uh, ability to handle such a post. Let them look for somebody who is credible, who can manage the situation in Nigeria now. Not the amount that they place on the, the picking of forms that we help Nigerians to come out of this mess we are in now. We are looking for somebody who can be able to handle the situation that everybody is crying. We are hungry. All right, then. Emeka, yeah, thank you very much. Yes, uh, uh, we, we've almost run out of time, but thank you very much for your call because we did get the input of uh, your contribution. Now, uh, uh, now uh, I wanted uh, to respond quickly to that. Uh, but, but, yeah, he, he, okay, um, uh, but, but I want to hear okay, from her okay. uh, because I wanted to hear from her, from her on the leadership of the party now in the state where the governor is in charge. So this will cut down on the tassels that we have seen in the past in, in states, right? Yeah, yeah. Es uh, especially with uh, the uh, party structures in the states mm -hmm. and uh, the people in charge. But then what happens in states where probably APC does not have a sitting governor? The, ca the governorship candidates. The governorship candidates mm -hmm. in, will now, but you know, we don't always have governorship candidates except yes, towards election. election. Mm. So, so that uh, is, that is, and as you were saying, thing. there are structures. Uh, the uh, structures, uh, whoever people that you know were saw themselves as leaders of the party before in the yeah. states had their own structures. Yeah. Now that there has been this clear uh, explanation, um, what is going to happen to those structures? Uh, will they be thrown into the kitty? on the side of the party? No, except for very, very few states. Uh, they've always been working together. Okay. Um, it's just that these things are there in the Constitution. So the, the, the national chairman just re-echoed um, this. Okay. And well, what uh, Maker said, I need to quickly respond. Yes, uh, very, very briefly, That please. you picked up nomination, expression of nomination and nomination does not mean you would even be qualified to take to do the primaries. There will be screening. There will be a lot of things. And that you have been screened and you took part in primaries does not mean you will win. So at the end of the day, the delegates <laughs> would obviously pick the best candidate. And so, for our party, so that's why you we, said we know the best no, party. So and that's why you said it's only for big you can't win. You, don't, you can't win that argument in, in the sense that you've already shot out some people in the first instance with the hundred million uh, nomination. No, I have team. said it before you came in uh -huh. that presidential election anywhere in the world is not, for, is small not boys. for small boys. In America, Joe Biden ran with the incumbent president. Joe Biden mm. has been sending for almost over 30 years. Yeah, it's not for small kids, but at the same time, it's not in terms of the amount of money. No, no, it's not you, uh -huh. it's not you contributing. In 2014, mm. when Mamadou Bari became it the candidate. It was 27.5 million. Now, he did complain that it was too much. But it, it was not even the one that paid. Don't forget but that we did scratch card. Yes. And average Nigerian were contributing 100 naira. So if they believe... what I think we should, the uh, parties should be doing in Nigeria, mm. is for parties to start to have real members 
where okay. they can actually Dues. get it. Yes, get the dues. Dues, dues paying dues. members. So that yeah. there yeah. will be enough money to run the party so that we don't well, rely well, on some of is If Uncle Yori decide to run now, there will be some of his viewers. That's okay, yeah. Hmm. 100 naira, 200. That's what they did for let's, the model brand. And let's keep this serious money. now. No, no, no. Let's keep this serious. It's a fact. Anyway, I want to thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> I, I want to thank you, sorry, lady and gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much, um, uh, Dr. Olabisi Deji Fulutile, journalist and editor in chief, uh, franktalknow.com, and uh, our friend Remy Omowai, Ocean State Commissioner for Works and uh, Transport. Thank you very much uh, for, you know, and I'm sure we're going to see, we're going to see you, you know. Adrent support of Ashwag Bola <laughs> Okay. That has been duly noted. <laughs> you, you, you didn't want to add any ardent supportership. No, let me just for now. You know I'm a journalist. For now. Women in exactly. Policy. Exactly. Women ardent supporters of more women in policy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, stay with us, please. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Now, uh, I don't know, the sleepy, or at least the peaceful uh, uh, town of Ilaro uh, that actually houses uh, a polytechnic, uh, you know, it has been hit by, you know, more than a fair bit of um, lawlessness. Uh, in the town, hostels where, you know, students of the institution uh, reside uh, were among those that were attacked by, I don't know what to call them, marauding, lawbreakers, uh, but the report is that people in the town have been suffering, and in particular the students of uh, the uh, Federal Polytechnic Ilaro, is that the correct designation? Yes, you know, that's and correct. we do have uh, the uh, rector, Federal Polytechnic Ilaro, uh, architect Dr. Olusegun Aluko uh, with us here. Uh, thank you very much for coming along, sir. Good morning, and uh, sir. Dr. Olabisi Deji Fulutile uh, remains uh, with us. Uh, so, uh, first of all, the, the latest attack, I think, was over the weekend, and um, we heard all sorts of unsavory stories, you know, there are females among them, um, they got the, you know, you know uh, very dirty end of the stick because they allegedly were sexually uh, attacked as well. Um, and as a result of all of this, it's not surprising that you've held a stakeholders meeting that involves the authorities in town, the police, um, the civil defense. Um, tell us about it, sir. Tell us about that meeting. Um, before I go to that particular meeting, sure. I think I just have to debunk some of the issues that have been released. Circulating. Because one, none of the students was violated. Okay, that's very, very good to hear. I None of the students were sexually violated. violated. So that was false reporting, that was false reporting. Uh, you know, uh, in the media. Because immediately I heard about the robbery case. I went there for on-the-spot assessment. Okay. I had a talk with my students that were there, even with the neighbors that were there. They said the robbers did not even have enough time for that because it was like a raid on the street, mm -hmm. spending five, five minutes, more than five minutes. Okay, that's a great relief mm -hmm. that, uh, contrary so, to reports out there, none of the students... None of the students was especially violated. Uh, uh, so I want to correct that. This I'm sure you're, you're relieved there. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but robbery, yes, robbery took place. And uh, Ilaru has been very peaceful. But this upscale started about three weeks ago. Mm started with some areas, but now extended to where the students are resident. And we felt very concerned about it. We said, okay, when we heard about the first incident, we tried to get some vigilante to complement the effort of the policemen. But when the incident continued to rise without any uh, reprieve, we said, okay, let's call a stakeholders meeting. Okay. We contacted the SC to the governor of the state. Uh, honorable as this. So he got in touch with the Commissioner of Police, Ogun State, the Abateken Commandant of Ogun State. So we called the stakeholders <coughs> meeting together with the DPO of Ilaro and all the uh, landlords, the yardlodgers, and all the stakeholders and the students themselves, including the president of the students, NAS in Ogun State. We called them together. Let's see how we can work together. Because I know that security is everybody's 
uh, responsibility. responsibility. You cannot just say you want to take it over from our own hand alone. So we call everybody together so that we fashion out how to make sure that uh, this thing is uh, curbed before it escalated uh, further. And that's what we have done. And after the meeting, we arrive at certain some things mm -hmm. which we, we have passed on to both the leaders in the community, the landlords, the students themselves, because the landlords and others also complain about the students' behavior. Some of them coming back around 1 a.m., 2 a.m., night crawling, that if you want to tackle security, then everyone must be involved. So we iron out what are the steps to be taken, and we have taken some far-reaching decisions Indeed. on that. You know, I'll come back to you, but um, just, uh, Dr. Dejifuli, the, the whole matter of, well, the way uh, that Dr. Aluko has explained it, it's, it's sort of um, unlawful behavior in the town, uh, and it's, it's given us the impression that uh, it's not particularly that Ilaro Polytechnic, uh, Federal Polytechnic Ilaro, was singled out. It is the town. Uh, it just so happened that, you know, these uh, students were uh, in the way. Now, the whole matter of cultism, uh, and Dr. Luko will explain a bit more about that, but the whole matter of cultism is also thought to have been involved, perhaps because investigations will be ongoing. Rusticated students, disciplined students, you know, uh, and uh, Dr. Alifu just put, uh, just started on the whole matter about the responsibility of landlords too to ascertain who are the people that are their tenants who come in as students. All of those are going to be important, won't they? The yeah, the I think uh, part of the resolution now is that uh, for students to be taken in by any landlord, they should confirm yes. their studentship yes. and they should also fill certain forms. Yes. I think they should also work with the university. Maybe the, uh, they should the, put the that in the, with, I'm so used to it, <laughs> with the polytechnic, yeah, and uh, to uh, actually confirm the status of uh, such uh, students. But having said that, I think um, the issue of insecurity uh, is a national one and um, I don't think Ogun State or Ilaru is in isolation is isolated. However, if we are not careful, we will see what is happening at the national level in Ilaru. Because uh, if we keep looking at it that we hold meetings, we have called stakeholders meetings, we have done this, we have done this, without actually without those meetings having practical impact on what is happening, because that is the complaint of the students, that this thing has been happening, we've complained, the, univers the polytechnic and the community and the landlords they've met, and they've all said that they are doing this, yet we have not felt the impact of what they are doing. You, you get it. So I think uh, it's, it's obvious here uh, that uh, there is a need for more action than is current. Yeah, well, it's in, oh, okay. In okay. This uh, well, I, I wonder how the, Dr. Aluko will, you know, respond to yeah, that. But that as, more I've can said, be done. as I've said earlier, mm -hmm. that we took some decisions, mm -hmm. and uh, it's as if my doctor is a uh, part of that decision making, <laughs> <laughs> because one, we identified that uh, there are some people that have been rusticated, that have been withdrawn but who are still within the town. There are some people that were living in the town without any job. For instance, when I was going around on the spot assessment, I met some students, some group of students, and I asked one of them, where is your identity card? He said, it's from Imo State. Mm -mm. Uh, what are you doing in Laru? Nothing. And you came, you rent a house, and you are still feeding. How do you feed yourself? You see? And, and the, the house is in the community we are the usually we are the associate with the students. students. And the students were even living with him, assisting with him, and they've not asked questions. So concerning the landlords, we have told them mm -hmm. all the students will be given a form, they will fill it, and they will return it back to the school. Any landlord that refuses to do that one, we are going to report them to the law enforcement okay. agents. Mm -hmm. Then from our own end also, we have said, okay, all those students that have been rusticated, for one reason or the other, we will place their pictures around so that the landlords can come and verify that this one is no longer a student, he should not be given any accommodation within the school premises, within the, the area. Then we told the landlords, 
if you have a room that accommodates more than 20 students, you must get a night guard. Because some of you just build a house, put the students there, you don't even care about their security. All you need is collect the money and go away. We said now, if you have more than 20 students in a place, you must get a security guard. Then we said now, all the streets, they must have security guards. And uh, we provided numbers for our students, hotlines, that in case of any emergency, call any of this line. Then we are taking a step further, that all the landlords should have maybe something like a whistle, because there are some security that parades the major streets. But either lands is difficult, but if there is an emergency, if you blow a whistle, mm -hmm. it will attract the security men and they can easily come to their aid. These are the practical steps that we have in, uh, in, taken. Indeed. Now, um, you know, when we talk about security in, it, in its larger context, and there's no small aspect of security, the low-tech, uh, you know, uh, method of um, uh, the whistle is better than nothing. But are we able to explore technology as well you know, because one feels that that can be very, very helpful yes. too. Yes, we have uh, gone a step further. We are working on it. We have told them that uh, this location map, that is, tell us your location. We are setting up those outlines we're giving to them. We are putting GPRS on it for the, for the students so that in case of anything, once you just press that uh, number, mm -hmm. it will show your location where yeah. that thing is actually okay. happening. Mm -hmm. And from our own end, we have provided, we are providing Android phone for the head of security agencies within the locality, so that they will be able to have that line always working. That's our own contribution towards it. Because the the other question is, whose responsibility uh, for safety? Uh, who, who, whose is the responsibility? Uh, parents normally, you know, you want to be sure that um, you're handing over to an authority. If my child, my son, my daughter is there, um, you want to know that he's under the auspices of the Federal Polytechnic Ilaro. Uh, but at the moment, I don't know if that is exactly the case because Ilaro doesn't have you know, on-premises uh, mm -hmm. facilities. Yeah. So they have to go to the town, which other institutions also do, in some, mm. in some cases to augment, and in mm. some cases because there is nothing else. Mm. Uh, you see, any student of Federal Polytechnic Laro is under the auspices of the management of Federal Polytechnic Laro. Okay. And that is why we have taken interest yes. in the security of the area where our students are living. Even prior to this time, Prior to this uh, escalation of uh, robbery in Ilaro, our security men parades those places where our student lives. Okay. And we have been very, very, very effective. That is uh, uh, the uh, police security, security men. Yes, police you know. security men. It's a matter of duty for them to parade, and we even locate some of them. You see, what we did was that we have some vigilantes we have hired. The vigilantes are supervised by our own security men to make sure that all of them are on their beat. We need the town. An area of the hotspots, we make sure that our patrol fake for the student also. But now we have, according to uh, uh, look, taking the advice of the Commissioner for Police, Ogo State, we have uh, handed over those vigilante men to the policemen to complement their effort because we, we believe they believe that uh, if all of them should work together, not in isolation, that it will help the, to. Uh, advance the security network of the, pol of the place, and that's what we have done now. Well, it, it, it seems... Uh, meanwhile, has this disrupted your academic calendar in any way, shape, or form? No, 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 at all. No? Okay. At all, at all. So students were... Students are still on campus. The academic calendar is running. And, uh, you know, Ilaru is noted for smooth academic calendar. We have not had disruption for the past 15 years. Exactly. So that's why it was a bit shocking yes. when one heard of this uh, disturbance to mm. the uh, peace. That is what our, Ilaro is normally a very mm. peaceful, indeed, some we, will say sleepy town. Uh -huh. There's not so much activity going yeah. on there. Not uh, disruption. I guess we are not looking at uh, strikes by ASUP. Um, we, are we not looking at that aspect? Uh, uh, it, it, has not, it has not come. <laughs> <laughs> it has not come. But it was in the past. <laughs> so yeah. uh, it couldn't have been smooth all the way. Um, I, I, no, the, not maybe, because maybe, of... Maybe the director is talking in particular about... about the local, okay. the Laro, federal Laro see, police. See, right? even when there is a national ASUP strike, we have been able to manage to... To, to still work around it. Around it. Mm -hmm. Because most times it will fall... 
during our holidays. Okay. Mazi <laughs> uh, uh, we know that education is one of your interests, but we lost Mazi. Mazi Okorafo, Inaro Juku was going to, um, you know, uh, come in on this particular subject. Uh, I, in fact, I never had a chance to ask him before. I wonder if Mazi is an educationist. <laughs> if it, when it comes to education, um, he's, he's, he's always uh, there. Um, now, CDAs, you know, uh, uh, CDCs, they should try to put in place solid security arrangements, which is what you've talked about now. Yes. Um, the, can, can the police, you know, we always hear of the shortage of, of, of policemen. Yes. Uh, that's all. Okay, Ma Mazi Okorafo is back. Okay, Mazi. Uh, the one is extra woman, madam. Uh, you mm -hmm. see, this issue of uh, armed robbery within the school environment and uh, within the, the, the facility, this has to do with court members. I think there is need for this school, not only in Laro. Where you have such things or such incidents, all those students have been rusticated and the court members. At least the school should from time to time make use of the press club in the school, distracting all those men, those ones that are the So that you help the school. Because a situation whereby the landlord, this off campus, they have buildings, no security, no fence, nothing. Even when there is no, there is no security at the gate. Yeah, but that's it's what the rector has said is not going to be tolerated anymore. Fine. But the question is this prevention is better than cure. Let the Elaro and other schools make use of the use in that environment. The traditional relax of those environments and the regional relax in those environments should be part and parcel of the security network in any environment. So you, know, you cannot ask you the problem Nigeria is facing today is all this rustication of students and they will take over. And the court system, the court members are too many everywhere. Not only Elaro, we have to take Precautionary measures now or never because if you don't take them, they will do what? Destroy the school environment. If it's taken off campus, that's why I say advance the uh, schools. Please tell people to come and uh, just host them in the school so they have enough host them. People will still back in. Thank you very much. Have a blessed day. Indeed, thank you very thank much. You. He, he spoke about traditional rulers there, you yeah. know, and the traditional ruler in Ilaro is involved. He yes. was represented. Yes. He was rep Olu Council was represented. Mm. The Olun Council yes. was represented at this yes. particular meeting. Mm. Uh, well, I suppose the, 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 the one of the, well, it seems to us one of the more effective ways is for there to be adequate uh, uh, housing within yeah, exactly. the uh, institution itself, yes. which for various reasons we know. Uh, is that's uh, actually the question I, wa I was about to ask. That is there, what prevents uh, the institution from actually having uh, hostels? And also, do you have a record or a, a database of landlords that offer accommodation to students because mm. I think that is also very important and uh, staying within the limits of that database okay. in order to manage the situation better. Uh, uh, briefly, Rector. Okay, yes. You see, for uh, hostel accommodation, we have very little. 90% of our students live outside the campus. But I think the federal government has changed the policy now. Third fund has started constructing those stairs again. Okay. We are we are we are benefit beneficiary of uh, one currently going on, but that will not solve the problem also because it's not enough. Mm. Then the other aspect if ninety percent of, of your students, uh, but, but what's your student population? About thirteen thousand. Oh dear. Okay. Mm. Okay. Then on the other aspect of a uh, database for the we used to have, and we used to blacklist landlords that flout our order. Okay. But you know of recent. A lot of people just see it as a, a, a business, a business something, and they started building. Mm. So now that uh, this issue has happened, we are going to work on the database and update it. Okay. And then uh, mm. all those that found one thing, this uh, the DPO has given us his word, we should report them and they will take necessary action against them. Okay. Well, I want to thank you very much, architect Dr. Olusha Aluko, uh, rector at the Federal Polytechnic. And uh, uh, we're, we're very relieved that you corrected that uh, impression that uh, any of the female students oh, were violated. Like that. No, not, nothing like that. Let happened. me just say something about Ilaro Poly before we go. Very, very big. Yes, I, I was in that uh, polytechnic, I think, last year. Okay. And I saw all the structures from, uh, is it uh, PT? PT. 
uh, Ted Fund. Ted Fund. I actually thought Ted Fund was the owner of <laughs> <laughs> everywhere. But they now told me that it also has to do with the rector, that uh, it depends on how the rector manages how the so funds so. that are available. So I got that, and I think I should just mention and this. And that so kudos to the rector. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that's uh, Dr. Deji. Uh, Dr. Ola Bisi Deji for uh, and uh, thank and you. We got her to even be part of our bus communication department. <laughs> there we you can go. Get so, so many things from you. <laughs> so please feel free to come and assist us. <laughs> okay. Okay then. So that's our program today. Thank you very much, thank sir. You, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so that's our program today. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I'm Yori Polani. Bye bye for now. <laughs>